Hello. The purpose of this video is to go over the anesthesia machine. Now, when you uh, go into an OR room, the first thing that you will do is you will check your anesthesia machine. There are three different things that you have to look at. You're going to be checking the high pressure system, intermediate pressure system, and low pressure system. The high pressure system is what I will be going over right now, which is the back of the anesthesia machine. In the back of the anesthesia machine, you will find three hoses. Sometimes it'll be four hoses, sometimes three, sometimes two. But universally, all the hoses are color-coded. The reason they are color-coded is because they will not, you will not be able to connect the wrong hose to the wrong inlet. Now, oxygen is always green, nitrous oxide is always blue, air is always yellow, and there will be a purple or white hose. The purple or white hose will be for vacuum. All these hoses are basically, they have a pin index safety system. This pin index safety system will not allow you to connect the wrong hose to the wrong outlet. So for example, I cannot connect oxygen, which is green, to a blue outlet, which is reserved for nitrous oxide. In keeping with the pin index safety system, in the back of the anesthesia machine, you will find outlets for, or inlets really, for each one of your tanks. You will have a green tank. Green tank means oxygen. A blue tank would be nitrous oxide, and similarly, a yellow tank would be air. You cannot connect a green tank to a blue inlet. You cannot connect a blue tank to a yellow inlet because they are reserved for air and nitrous oxide. Now, this is also a safety measure. Um, in the back of the anesthesia machine, how you connect these cylinders is you would connect them and it would, they would have to line up with these little uh, teeth here, which is part of that safety system. So you connect your tank, you lock the tank, and you basically lock the tank in position. Now, when you go into the OR, these tanks will probably already be in the back of the anesthesia machine. And so what you'll have to do is you'll have to crack them open. So you crack the cylinder open, and then you will see how much PSI is left in the cylinder, meaning what the volume of air, oxygen, or nitrous oxide is in the cylinder. And this is important because the purpose of having these tanks back here is if we have a pipeline failure, we have a way of delivering oxygen to our patient. So now, we've actually come to the front of the machine. And I'll be talking about certain characteristics of the front of the machine. The first thing, and the most important thing really, is your AMBU bag. So if you have a failure in your anesthesia machine, never forget the importance of delivering oxygen via an AMBU bag. The most important ventilator for me is having an AMBU bag. So before I go on and check anything else, I want to make sure that there's an AMBU bag. The AMBU bag is usually located either in the back of the machine or on the side of the machine. In this particular anesthesia machine, we have put it on the side of the machine. So turning to the front of the machine, you will notice that we have several gauges. Now these gauges are also color coded. They correspond to the cylinders in the back that we just checked. Because we cracked open that oxygen cylinder, we will notice that there is the oxygen cylinder gauge right here. And the oxygen cylinder gauge tells me that I have 2,000 PSI, which signifies to me as in that cylinder is full of oxygen, which is a good thing. Now, how do I know that that's my oxygen cylinder ga uh, pressure gauge? Because right here, you will notice that you have little cylinders here. There'll be something depicting where that uh, pressure is coming from. So we have three gauges here and three gauges here. These three gauges happen to correspond to the pipeline um, sensors or pipeline oxygen uh, systems. And these three gauges here would be your cylinder gauges. Now, also, in keeping with the color coding, you will notice that you have a flow, the flow meters here. Your flow meters are also color coded to the same colors as the back of the anesthesia machine. You have the oxygen, nitrous oxide, and air. The positioning of oxygen is always closest to the common gas outlet, meaning the oxygen is the last gas to leave. Why? If we have a crack in one of the flow meters, it will not allow you to deliver a hypoxic mixture. And so that's why the oxygen is at the end. Another safety mechanism in the anesthesia machine is your nitrous oxide and O2. So we can crank up the nitrous oxygen all we want. 
you will, at the same time, the machine will automatically proportion the oxygen and crank that up as well. If you basically decrease the oxygen all the way down, the machine will not allow you to give nitrous oxide and it will shut the nitrous oxide off. This is a proportioning device or an interlink safety device. So for demonstration purposes, I have removed the vaporizer. Now, we have to think about what the vaporizer is. So back in the day, the anesthesia machine was called Boyle's apparatus. Now it's called the anesthesia workstation. However, a vaporizer still basically includes those tenants. Because the purpose of the vaporizer is to take the anesthetic liquid and turn it into a vapor. Therefore, we can deliver our anesthetic. Now, Again, just for demonstration purposes, I wanted to show you that all vaporizers have this locking mechanism in the back, depending on what kind of machine you're using. We have three different settings, so in this particular anesthesia machine, we can have up to three vaporizers. It doesn't matter where on each spot you put them, okay? So, once you put the vaporizer in, okay, it will sit in there and you will be able to lock it. The reason you're not going to be taking these vaporizers off the machine is because they are very carefully calibrated. They have sensors inside of them that are calibrated and so that if you take it out and you happen to turn it on its side or, or even upside down, you have ruined that calibration. So that is not something that we recommend you do. Now, in keeping with the anesthesia machine, once we lock it, this is called an interlock system. And so what that allows us to do, it allows us to open the gas. Now, when we open the gas, you will hear a little click every single time you open it. If we if you hear that click, okay? That click, there's another safety system in here. And let's say I have another vaporizer, um, and you want to turn that vaporizer on. It will not allow you to do that. It would only allow you to turn one vaporizer on at a time. That is a safety system. Now, in the mornings when you come in, one of the things that you are going to check is you can try to open two, and two vaporizers at the same time and you're checking that interlink system. The other thing that you will do is you will check the volume of anesthetic within your vaporizer. And so if that volume is low, then you have to refill that. That is part of your duties in the mornings as checking your anesthesia machine. In this particular vaporizer, what you would do is you would then remove the top and just pour in the anesthetic. Okay? All vaporizers are a little bit different. So for some vaporizers you will basically need a little hose and the hose will then slip into the vaporizer and you connect the uh, bottle to the hose and there and in there is how you fill it. There's another there's yet another way of filling the the uh, vaporizer and that is basically um, once you remove the cap, this has a little nipple and it can go right into the vaporizer and then it pours right in. Okay? So there are different ways of filling the vaporizers. It's always advisable that you find out which vaporizer you're using and so that you become familiar with how to uh, refill your vaporizer. So before we start with the arm of the anesthesia machine, we're just going to take a second and identify all the different components that we see. So, number one, you're going to see this little screen here. This screen happens to be the ventilator. So all your ventilator settings are in this screen. So you will notice your tidal volume is here, how much oxygen you're delivering, your peak airway pressure, everything, everything is on the screen. And how you change all your settings is through this knob or by actually clicking the menus. Every ventilator and every machine is different. And so I would urge you to become acquainted with whatever ventilator you're using. Second, we're going to just kind of move just right off the top. You'll see that you have what looks like an oxygen gauge. Now, yes, we've gone through all these numerous amounts of oxygen gauges, but this is an ancillary oxygen gauge. The importance of this is that this is independent from your ventilator. So if you have a failure in your ventilator and you need to hook up your AMBU bag, you can do this through this gauge. Okay. And right next to this oxygen sensor, we have the suction sensor and it's not really a sensor it's a gauge so you see where and how much uh, suction you have on the patient and how you adjust your suction is through the snob. Moving down from 
the uh, ventilator and your gauges, you basically have the arm. The first thing that we notice on the arm is your bellows. Now, different anesthesia machines, you may have an ascending or descending bellows depending on the anesthesia machine. The bellows will also tell you in numerical form how much tidal volume you are delivering to the patient. In this sense, your bellows will go down and up. Okay? Um, next thing, you have the APL valve. You have a gauge that will tell you what your peak airway pressure is as well. Moving next to that, you have your unidirectional um, valves. Uh, your unidirectional valves become very important because you want to make sure that they're free of moisture and they're not sticking on in, uh, inhalation and exhalation as well. Attached to your unidirectional valves would be your uh, actual uh, circuit, your anesthesia circuit, which is uh, attached to the limbs. Now, the anesthesia circuit, you have your anesthesia circuit, you have your CO2 monitor, which will attach to the uh, end of your endotracheal tube here. You have an L connector, and this L connector here attaches to the endotracheal tube, and you have a mask. Part with that, you also have a bag, and the bag attaches here. This is very similar to an AMBU bag, because if we're going to ventilate the patient, this is what you will be pressing to ventilate the patient. Notice how I say ventilate, and I want to urge you not to say you're bagging a patient, which has a negative connotation. You, you have to kind of get the lingo under your uh, belt, per se, and use ventilating patients. Okay? We keep on moving down from there. We also have this little thing that opens, and it, what it houses, it houses your oxygen sensor. We'll go over the oxygen sensor in just a second. We keep on moving down. We have your soda line. Your soda lime is very important because I can see that the soda lime in this case is white. Therefore, it has not turned purple, so it's still good. If it turns purple, it means it can no longer filtrate uh, the CO2, which is on the expiratory, as we expire CO2. The actual machine will filter that expiration and will filter that so that the gas can be recirculating. Now, how you would change that is by basically pressing on this button and your soda lime drops down and you can change your soda lime canisters. The other thing that I want to bring your attention is this oxygen flush valve. The oxygen flush valve technically is part of your intermediate um, pressure system. Your intermediate pressure system is 45 to 55 psi and we'll talk about the importance of that in just a second as well. So now we're going to get into more specifics. So in keeping with checking your machine, the other thing you will need is a bulb. The bulb is used to check your low pressure system and there you will see a nipple and that's where the bulb connects and you will check your low pressure system. Another thing that we must check is your O2 calibration. So your oxygen sensor in this uh, Omita machine, it's located right here. And what you'd have to do is you have to disconnect it and wait almost two minutes per se for it to basically calibrate to room oxygen. Room oxygen, as we know, is 21%. And so what this will read on our uh, machine will be, it'll be that the oxygen is at 21%. If you can see here, the gauge is saying that the oxygen is at 24%. So we just wait until it gets to 21%. Once it gets to 21%, what you would next do is reconnect the oxygen sensor right in here. Okay. You close the system, and you will see that the oxygen gauge starts rising, and it will rise to 100%. And therefore, we know that the calibration of the oxygen sensor is correct. Why is this important? Because it is very important for us to know as anesthesia providers how much oxygen we're delivering. Now, in delivering oxygen, another thing that, so we have checked the low pressure system, we checked the oxygen sensor gauge. Another thing that you can always check as well is to make sure that your O2 flush valve runs. You can kind of hear the O2 flush valve. Another thing you can do is you can take your system and you basically hold it here and you'll see that your AMBU bag gets large and so your oxygen flush valve is working. Now, I want to bring your attention to something though. The oxygen flush valve is part of the intermediate system. Your intermediate pressure system is 45 to 55 PSI. That's a lot of PSI. If you look at this bag, it's pretty full. How would you, look, you like your lung to be like that? That's a lot of pressure to be inserting in someone's lung. 
So the lesson here is never ever press this button if your circuit is connected to the patient because you may give them immunotolerance. So, in keeping with that, um, the other thing that I went over is your APL valve. Your APL valve will basically be a valve that you can manually flip between manual and um, manual and automated uh, respirations. Now, when you're on manual respirations, you can also control how much pressure you want to uh, use in order to help you ventilate. Now, this pressure that you're exerting is pressure that you're exerting on the patient when you have this mask on. And you will see how much pressure it is because you also see a peak airway pressure here. Now, if you put it on your ventilator, you will see the bellows go up and down. There are machines nowadays that are also piston driven and they may not have bellows. You may have, so there's three types. You may have ascending bellows, descending bellows, or piston driven machines where you will not see the bellows. And that uh, becomes important, obviously, because you want to make sure that, that the bellows rise or they fall according to uh, which machine you have. Um, the last thing I want to bring up is a soda lime. So the soda lime system, if you think about it, what we do when we breathe in and we breathe out. When we breathe in, we inspire and we inspire oxygen. When you're hooked up to the anesthesia machine, you're going to breathe and you will breathe in oxygen and anesthetic gas. As you breathe out, you will breathe out anesthetic gases and CO2. The CO2 gets recirculated and it basically gets filtered through the soda lime. The soda lime has a special dye indicator that it will turn purple when it has been used up and it can no longer function as a filtration system. And so you will have to change the soda lime. Now that anesthetic gas that gets filtered out as well also goes through a system and it goes out through the scavenging system which is in the back of the anesthesia machine which we will go over in just a second. So in here you have the anesthesia scavenging system. The scavenging system is what basically just like I said as your anesthetic gases are expired they have to basic they have to be taken away from the room and so if your hospital has a suction uh, uh, system or a wall suction that will go through the wall suction. In office surgery there will just be a tube that will um, divert the anesthetic gases away from the room and out to the ambient air. So this is your scavenging system. You can adjust your scavenging system as well and you will see that this bag will inflate and deflate as well as when the patient's expiring.